Okay, we have here an integral from the MIT integration, be 2019, number 20. We have the integral of cosine arctan of x dx. And I think we'll do two methods on this. For my first one, I'm just going to actually set this arctan equal to y. We're not going to do this as a u substitution. I'm not going to take a derivative. We're just going to work with it the way we have it here. So if we have y equal to arctan of x, if I take tangent on both sides, solving for x, we have x equals tan of y. So looking at it this way, just rewriting the integral, what I'm saying here is we've got cosine y dx. But I don't want to mix variables in the same integral, so let's get an expression for cosine of y. Coming back over here, let's draw a triangle. Particularly, you're going to want a right triangle. Using this equation here, we're saying our angle on this is going to be y tan of y opposite over adjacent. Look at it like x over one, x over one. Pythagorean theorem to find the third side, x squared plus one. So then in order to get our value for cosine of y, all I need is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what we need is one over square root, x squared plus one. Plug this thing back into our problem and what we're left with is dx over square root x squared plus 1. Now for this, you could do this with a formula, and that's fine. This is going to be arc cinch of x plus c. But I actually want to do out the trig substitution on it just to get the answer in a different form and show how it works. So let me get rid of all this junk. I'll do the trig substitution setting x equal to tan of t. Again, you could do hyperbolic trig substitution here, but then that's just going to get you back to this answer. I want the answer to look differently, so we'll do a different trick substitution. So we'll do x equal tan t, dx equal to secant squared t dt. And then for this x squared plus 1, let's just notice x squared plus 1, where x is tangent, that's going to be tan squared t plus 1. But we have the identity tan squared t plus 1 is the same thing as secant squared t. So go ahead, substitute dx is going to be secant squared t dt, and then this is this is secant squared of t. But this right here, this is the same thing as secant t. I'm not worried about absolute values this time. So then from here, we can just cancel all this with one of these, and we're just integrating secant t. Use a formula on it, natural log secant t plus tan t. And then we can almost go ahead and back substitute. We have a value here for tan t, that's just gonna be x. We almost have a value for secant t. Let's just continue on with this. If this is x squared plus one, if I just take a square root on both sides, we have secant t equals this thing. So putting this together, what we have, natural log, absolute value, square root, x squared plus one, plus tan t is x, add a plus c, but one more thing, notice this is always going to be positive, so let's just drop absolute values, put in parentheses, and that's going to be method one. Method number two seems kind of similar. We start basically the same way. We'll do a substitution for arc tan x. And then again, the same thing. Solve for x, taking tan on both sides, we have x equals tan u. But now I'm going to do the full substitution and take a derivative. So for dx, we get secant squared u du. Go ahead and substitute. This whole thing now becomes just cosine of u, and our dx is secant squared of u du. But let's just write this another way. Secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So for one of them, we'll leave as secant, and for the other one, I'll leave it, I'll write it as like, here, let's just do it like this, 1 over cosine u. That way I can cancel cosines here. Go ahead and integrate it. We get natural log, absolute value, secant u plus tan u. You can kind of see these methods are really similar. Just kind of a slight different approach. Now let's back substitute on it. And let's see, so for tan u, again, we already have our value for tan u. We can draw the triangle, but we already know, and we can just kind of use the same identity again, that x squared plus one, this is gonna be the same thing as secant squared u. Do the same thing with the square root. Plug it all back in, and for my solution to this, again, dropping absolute value, Natural log x squared plus 1 plus x plus c, and that's it. Okay, so there you go. Two different methods there, but really similar. There's like a lot of overlap. Some of it has to do with just kind of what form your solution you want, because if you're happy with the cinch solution, 
then maybe the first way is the way to go if you want. It seems like maybe if you want the natural log solution, maybe the second way is better. I don't know. It's a lot of it's just taste. So do whatever you got to do. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.